Hello! So I am going to read this book for our upcoming school year and then after this video is over prepare for further instruction um, so we can talk about it but for now let's start reading. Cry heart but never break. In the far north in a small snug house Four children lived with their beloved grandmother, a kindly woman she had cared for them for many years. Now she had a visitor. Not wishing to frighten the children, the visitor had left his Sith outside the door. All the same, they knew that it was death. Nels, the oldest, and his sister Siona, closed their eyes heavy with sorrow. Casper, who was the youngest, tried to ignore the visitor, but Leah, the youngest, who was always getting into trouble, stared straight at death. In the quiet, the children could hear their grandmother upstairs, breathing with the same raspy breaths as the figure at the table. They knew death had come for her and that the time was short. Since everyone knew death's only f friend is night, the children quickly made a plan. They would keep death away from their grandmother by giving him coffee all through the night. At dawn, he would have no choice but to leave without her. So every time death emptied his cup, Nels would ask, More coffee, sir? And death would nod. Death loved his coffee strong and black like the night, and he was happy to sit and rest for a while. Time passed. Finally, death was ready. He placed his bony hand over the cup to signal no more. Then Leah, who had been watching death all night, reached out and took his hand. Oh, death, she said. Our grandmother is so dear to us. Why does she have to die? Some people say that death's heart is as dead as black as an... Some people say death's heart is as dead and as black as a piece of coal. But that is not true. Beneath his inky cloak, Death's heart is as red as the most beautiful sunset and with beats of great love of life. Death wanted to help the children understand, so he said, I would like to tell you a story. And in the strong, sweet voice, he began to speak. Once upon a time, so long ago that only I can remember, there lived two brothers. One was called Sorrow, and the other was Grief. Woefully and sad, they moved up and down their gloomy valley. They went slowly and heavily, and because they never looked up, they never saw through the shadows to the tops of the hills. At the tops of those hills, there lived two sisters, Joy and Delight. They were bright and sunny, and their days were filled with happiness. The only shadow was their sense of something was missing. They didn't know what, but they could but they couldn't fully enjoy their happiness. Death Death saw Leah nodding and said, I think you can guess what happened next. One day the brothers and the sisters met. Sorrow fell instantly in love with delight, and she with him, and it was the same for grief and joy. Each couldn't live without the other. After their double wedding and the great celebration, the two couples moved into neighboring houses halfway up and halfway down the hill. This is the distance to their old homes was the same. They all lived to be very old, but when the time came to die, grief and joy did so on the same day, as did sorrow and delight. Their happiness together had been so great that they couldn't live without each other. That's a good story, said Nels. It is the same with life and death, death said. What would be life what would life be worth if there were no death? What would who would enjoy the sun if it never rained? Who would yearn for the day if there was no night? The children weren't sure that they understood death fully, but somehow they knew he was right. At last, death stood up. 
it was time to go upstairs. A line of pale gray was edging away at the night. Casper wanted to stop death, but Nels held him back. No, Nels said. Life is moving on. This is how it must be. Moments later, the children heard the upstairs window open. Then, in the voice somewhere between a cry and a whisper, death said, Fly, soul, fly, fly away. The children hurried upstairs. They tiptoed into their grandmother's room. The grandmother had died. They were certain where the curtains were blowing when the gentle morning breeze, looking at the children, death said quietly, Cry hard, but never break. Let your tears of grief and sadness help begin new life. Then he was gone. Ever after, whenever the children opened the window, they would think of their grandmother, and when the breeze caressed their face, they could feel her touch. In the years that followed, the children lived with their joy and their sorrow, but they always remembered death's word and took great comfort from their hearts which grieved and cried, but never broke.